Back live at the Garden, it's our Knicks fix with Alan Hahn tonight at the world's most famous arena, the Knicks and the Cleveland Cavaliers. We're back in the Geico studio suite, Al Troutwig, Alan Hahn. I was really surprised when I heard this. How about you? Well, it's been a week, and to me, I think it was the, the speculation was starting to grow that this was going to be more than just sore knee, which is what they were saying basically all week long. When he goes that many days without playing, and you could just tell it was starting to build. He wasn't talking to anybody. There was a sense that something more than just soreness was happening here. And so when he did make that announcement, when the team said that he will require surgery, it almost was like, okay, now it all makes sense. And it's unfortunate. Amazingly, right after hearing about Amari, now two starters are out possibly for the rest of the season. Now, we're not doctors, obviously, but to Knicks fans, we can say that we have seen this surgery heal in a lot less than six weeks. Absolutely. Actually, you know, my own experience, I had this when I played in college, and it took four weeks and I was back on the court. You walk out of this surgery. You know, this isn't a serious knee injury, but... What Jeremy said was that when he tested it out this morning, he could not cut, he could not jump. And those are two big parts of the game of basketball. And so if he's not going to be able to play the game at the level he needs to play it as a Knicks starter, well, he better get it fixed early, earlier rather than later so that if the Knicks do get deep into the playoffs enough for him to make a comeback, and who's to say it does take six weeks? He said himself that he's usually a fast healer, so perhaps he comes back a little bit sooner and can be ready to go at 100%. And, you know, so that, I think that's really why the decision was made to do it now. now. Our brain trust in the truck, and I know you have been looking around the NBA landscape. There are not a lot of great options out there, though. <laughs> no, not this late in the season. And, you know, you think about it. Mike James is a name that comes to mind. And the ir irony here is that Mike James was somebody on the Knicks' radar right before Lynn's sanity happened. And had Jeremy Lynn been waived, he was the guy that they were going to sign, according to him, is what he said on Twitter. So Mike James is now available. Will the Knicks look that way? But Mike Woodson didn't sound like he wanted to look outside. It sounds to me like he's going to give Tony Douglas a chance to bookend his season. He started off as a starting point guard. Will he finish the season now in, in the rotation as an important player right here? How about sort of what I hinted at before, how weird the season has gone? I mean, uh, we haven't taken slight turns. We've made a right, and then we've made a left. No, we've gone up and yeah, down, right. and up and down. And that's the way this thing has been. But if you really look at the way this team is going right now, Carmelo is banged up, and he's playing through it. Jared Jeffrey's going to try to come back maybe next week. He's still going to be banged up. He's going to play through something. Baron Davis, and this is a really big part of it, is with Jeremy Lin out. Baron Davis still can't play big minutes. He is coming back a year ago, had a herniated disc, and now we're talking about he can't play more than 30 minutes because of the hamstring, a calf injury. Mike maybe can't log a lot of minutes. This is a banged-up team, and they've got to finish the season somehow and get a playoff spot dealing with all these injuries. What complicates things is that the Knicks schedule now is going to get tough after tonight even though they only have two games in the week coming up. Yeah, they have the seven days where they have three, uh, two days before Tuesday's game to kind of rest and recover, and then they have two days after Thursday's game where they can get a couple more days of rest as well, but then it really hits. We're talking about 11 games in the final 18 days of the regular season, and look at the opponents. They're playing eight of the 14 games above teams with winning records, so it's going to be a challenge on the road more than they are home but they've got to lock this thing up, Al. I mean, they still have a chance. So the idea is they got to fight through this as best they can. And basically, you know, what, like, what Mike Woodson said was, we're going to go with the guys we have. And they still have enough. We've talked about depth all season. This is a real test of that depth now. Now, one thing we know, Iman Shumpert has a lot more experience now than he did when the season began yeah. at the point. The X factor is Tony Douglas. Where's his head right now? Do you have any idea? Well, you hope that he's ready for this challenge because, you know, he has been a good soldier most of the season. He's the guy that fell out of the rotation when Jeremy Lin emerged as the point guard. So this is a challenge now for Tony Douglas to come in and show that he belongs in the NBA, that he should stay with this team. They do have him for another year under contract, but it's very possible that he could be a guy that slides out and they move him if he's not part of the future. So this is his chance now, and let's see what he does with it. Recapping the major story tonight, the Knicks announcing that Jeremy Lin has a tear in his left knee meniscus. He'll be operated on early next week. He'll be out about six weeks.